Hello everyone and welcome to my channel this is the Nineth part of what if Deku was Sanji's reincarnation, my heroes reborn, the author of this great fanficy is Emma Ivoli links to them and original story in the description. Chapter 9, The Obstacle Course Race Everyone ran through the starting line, and well, that was when they were hit by the first obstacle, hundreds of students trying to run through the same hallway. To say there was a traffic jam would be an understatement. So that was the first obstacle. However Todoroki managed to get out of there by freezing the ground. Thankfully many students managed to get out of there. Not only that but he left a trail of ice preventing most of the participants to try to follow him. Bakugo managed to get out of it thanks to his explosions launching them in the air. He grinned however someone ran past him, as in literally running through the air. What the fuck? He yelled, Deku? Izuka sighed as he ran past him, using the technique Skywalk, which was the name he gave to running in the air. Meanwhile Mashireo was using his tail to jump, having fought Todoroki before predicted this trick. You're till on the track. Good job. Said Toru skating past him. Thanks. He said then realized something, wait. Where did you get those ice skates? Taru shrugged and hummed I don't know and then performed a triple axel before continuing. That was when Momo using a staff to get past the ice. I didn't create the ice skates. Said Momo, she gave me the same answer. Ha! Huh? Said Mashireo with a shrug and continue on his way. Meanwhile Achiko was trying to make it past the ice as she didn't want to use her quirk yet. However Mineta of all people was bragging about how awesome he, he was as he used his quirk. However that was when he was attacked by a robot. A gigantic robot. AKA the zero pointer from the entrance exam. So this is what was at the regular entrance exams. Said Todoroki. He proceeded to freeze one of the robots. Everyone was surprised by this. He of course ran off with saying be careful I froze it while it was off balance. He explained, on purpose. He ran off ahead. However two students were crushed underneath. Thankfully one of them was Kirishima whose quirk allowed his skin to harden like rocks. And the other was a member of class 1B, a guy named Tetsu 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 whose skin he could turn into steel. It should be noted the two are ridiculously similar. They both busted through the robots and ran over them. Izuku looked at one of the robot. Should I skywalk or try out the new plan? He thought. He knew he already showed off skywalk. He then took a breath. He began not only channel one for all into his legs while at the same using hockey. This better work. He thought. He proceeded kick one of the zero-pointer robots so hard it was smashed. He then landed on his feet with grace. I didn't break my legs. He cried in joy. He relived he had to keep moving and ran forward. Meanwhile Mashireo took a breath. This will probably be my only chance to show off at all. He said to himself. He used that depressing thought into a blast of red-colored energy as he yelled out Shur Shur Hokuden. The blast hit the robot and knocked it down. At the same time Momo created a cannon that destroyed multiple. In the teacher's box. Hell yeah. Those are my kids. He cheered. The other teachers in the box stared at him. What? I only have five students, because of that I'm allowed to play favorites. He said. All Might looked at him and really couldn't blame him. Even though it had only been a couple weeks, it was clear he had gotten close to the five teenagers. The race continued and the students got to the next obstacle, a large canyon with ropes connecting the various points to order to act like a bridge. Yes. Cheered Achiko becoming determined, this is my time to shine. She jumped to the one of the ropes and especially run across it. Whoa. Since when can she do that? Asked Mina. When she discovered she was a ninja in a past life. Said Suyu. Oh, right. Said Mina with a sweat drop. Suyu then jumped and climbed across one of the ropes. With he stared at the canyon and sighed. 
well I guess it can't be helped. He said. He once again started using Skywalk to get across. Meanwhile a pink-haired girl from the support course was using the gear she created to get across the canyon. In the teacher's box Hibiki shuddered. Crap. It's her. He said. The other teachers stared at her. You said that out loud. Said Aiko. Has she been giving you a hard time? Asked Power Loader, who mainly taught support course. She has. Said Hibiki. Flashback. Hibiki was walking down the halls, when suddenly the same girl showed up. Hey your orchestra rave aren't you? Asked the girl. Yeah, I am. Said Hibiki. My name is Mae Hatsum. I'm a support course student. She said. Oh cool. Said Hibiki. I want to make babies with you. She said. Hibiki stared at the girl then turned tail and ran, any sane and rational man would after hearing a teenage girl demand that from him. End of flashback. I found out afterwards that she meant inventions but still I've been avoiding her. Said Hibiki, I'm 99% sure she's been stalking me. I will neither confirm nor deny this fact. Said Aiko. I'll talk to her about that. Said Power Loader, but I can't make any promises. Thanks. Said Hibiki. Back at the canyon, Toru saw the sort of thing in front her and knew she had to do something. She pulled out the party cannon from somewhere used it to get across, across the cannon in a shower of confetti. In the announcer's booth present Mike was confused. Wait. She allowed to that. He yelled out. It's ability she learned about recently, she can summon things from somewhere, she doesn't know where they come from. Side Aizawa who was acting as co-announcer. What? Asked present Mike even more confused. Meanwhile students had gotten to the third part of the obstacle course, with Todoroki still in first place. However the obstacle was a minefield, and if someone stepped on they would be comically flung into the air. Todoroki was trying to his best to navigate. That was until Bakugo showed up flying using his explosions, yelling, you bastard. You declared war on the wrong person. The two began to fight. However a shadow ran above them and then landed on the other side of the minefield. Both of them stopped fighting and gapped at who it was. It was of course Suzuku. What? How? Demanded Bakugo. Izuku either didn't hear or just flat ignored him. Either was a good answer. However the crowd was going wild with this twist. After all everyone was so focused on the toe fighting that they didn't notice Izuku using not quite flight to pass them up. Izuku ran as he could for the rest of the way. I would have preferred to show off something else, I guess that's for the rest of the competitions are for. He thought. Then he noticed that Bakugo and Todoroki stopped fitting and went after him. However it wasn't enough, as he already cleared the minefield long before them he had a huge advantage. The crowd cheered as Izuku cleared the finish line first. Who? Oh yeah! Cheered Hibiki as Izuku crossed the finish line. However what happened next caused everyone to react in shock. A second place went to Mashireo. Now wh where am I? He asked. The crowd practically died in wondering how he got there. Thankfully Midnight had received a tracker or the event and it was connected to Aiko. Aiko. Said Midnight, was he disqualified? Ugh. I hate this so much. Yelled Aiko, I knew he got lost but I didn't know. He didn't leave the obstacle course so he didn't get disqualified. Mashireo Ojiro did not break any rules. So he is now in second place. Said Midnight. Good job. Said Izuku. I don't even know how I got here. Yelled Mashireo. In the teacher's box Hibiki I was twitching. How? Said Hibiki. Do you really want to know? Or would you prefer not knowing? Asked Aiko. I would prefer not knowing. Said Hibiki. Good choice. 
said Iko. Two of your kids got the stop two spots, said All Might. Yeah. Izuku made sense. Mashareo, said Hibiki with a sigh. And soon enough the others came in. Daku, cheered Achiko as she ran toward Izuku. Great job with number one. Said Achiko was how a bit of breath, how were you able to do that? Just something I learned from my past life. Said Izuku. His body literally caught on fire, don't ask me how I learned it. He said rather darkly. Momo passed the finish line. Her eye was twitching. Why? Because Mineta was stuck to her back. She then jumped into the air and slammed back down with Mineta on his back. Totally worth it. Yelled Mineta. Yay! I made it! Cheered Toru as she crossed the finish line. Then she noticed Ida. He was frozen in a mix of shock and horror. What's wrong with him? She asked. He got pretty low for someone who had a speed-based quirk. Said Achiko. Oh makes sense. Said Toru. And soon enough the race was over with those getting the 42 spots getting in. All of class 1A and 1B getting in spots for the next round, though Aoyama, a rather flamboyant boy from class 1A getting the bottom spot. However as the cutoff was 42, the purple-haired boy from general education and May, aka, Hibiki's probable stalker, also making it in. And soon enough it was time to announce round 2. Midnight got excited as she announced the next round. With the spinner once again getting everyone awaiting the next battle. And soon enough it was announced. The Cavalry Battle, a game that was in Japan common in sports festival. Where one person would act as a writer and other members would like a horse. Midnight began to explain the rules. It was normal, however each other person was assigned a point value depending on what place they got in the race. So it seems like each team will have a different point value. Said Mina. That's what it sounds like. Said Achiko. Hey. I'm the one explaining it. Got it. Yelled Midnight. Now each point goes up in increments of 5, with 42nd place being 5 then 41st being 10 and so on so forth. Said Midnight, and with 1st place being 10 million points. The second she said that Izuku turned white. As everyone realized that the in order to win they had to go him. That's right. It's survival of the fittest, the way for the lowest is to overthrow the top. Mocked Midnight. Everyone looked at Izuku who was sweating heavily. Of course this had to happen. He thought. And with that the second event was going to get started. And hopefully there will be some who would team up with Izuku. Next time, it's the cavalry battle. Who will Izuku team up with? Even with a team set he knows he can't go on the defensive. Instead, he has to think like a pirate. Will the plan work? Find out next time. That will be it for this part. I hope everyone enjoyed if you did please leave a like and comment if you want part 10. If you want to hear more from me subscribe I hope to see you all in the next one.